Okay, just doing a quick video today because things are just, I mean, absolutely amazing. I, I don't really know what to say. This is just incredible. It's a goji berry. I think the ends are not getting as much nutrients. So we have to bring that line both directions. It really has to drip down on there, not just be flooding the bed. Because it must biofilter and not reach the roots. But, um, yeah, you can see it's quite spectacular in here. We just pulled off, you know, like four or five computer, uh, uh, com computers, computers, cucumbers. <laughs> what have I been doing in my life? Um, yeah, and I, we eat peppers all the time and basil and parsley and, and shard. I've got so much shard. And I like, I like making a little wrap. That's stevia leaves. Uh, if we take the stevia leaves, put them in a wrap of shard, add basil, add parsley, maybe a slice of cucumber, and uh, thyme, of course, you don't want to miss out on putting any thyme in there, and peppers. Got some good peppers in here, nice variety, there's a little hot one. Yeah, and uh, this little sweet one over here. I don't remember the names of these guys, but that's pretty neat. So yeah, all that goes into a little wrap and a little uh, cider vinegar and some oil, and we're good to go. Maybe put a slice of some Rutgers or some cherry tomatoes we got around here. But anyway, that's what's going on. I have been um, transferring water into the tanks. I'm doing it right here now on this one from my rainwater because it's about to rain and I want to drain these guys back there if you can see them as much as possible. I got a hose that comes from there, a little valve that I turn on and voila. Oh, I feel some drizzle. I feel some, I see some clouds in the horizon. So yeah, that's, uh, so that's, oh, and the other thing that's pretty remarkable here is this corn. I mean, good gosh. <laughs> it's gonna reach the electric wires. It's almost there. Um, yeah, it's about five feet, six, five and a half feet tall. It's throwing its little flower, and it's been obviously doing really good here. This one on the end is not doing so good, and it's probably less likely to shade because there's not much shade from that southern or southeastern direction. There's any more than here, so I think we're not getting nutrients to that very end. And lo and behold, my my line stops before the end. So, <clears throat> yeah, um, just some of the goings-ons here in the, in the little bio garden. This is our organic hydroponics setup. We do deep water culture here. We do deep water culture here. Um, and aggregate flood and drain beds here. Just in a inert, porous mix of aggregates and biochar. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so deep water culture, biofiltration taking place in the beds, uh, in the tanks, and I feed my fish nothing more than liquid nutrients. You can see the water is a little cloudy. Uh, that's because I just poured in some of these carbon-rich nutrients from these buckets that we're making out in the backyard with our NutriCycler Vortex biofiltration system. Um, I do them in 50 gallon barrels and I do them in this system right here. We make fertilizer in this system when we're not using it to grow plants. Pretty cool. Way cool. Um, yeah, so this is what's happening over here. I've got crazy growth. I've, I've, I threw these guys on there to give me some shade earlier on. The bamboo and now I've just created a, another terrace for this vine, this cucumber vine to grow up. Not quite getting the same nutrients on this one as I as I am on this cucumber over here. I'll show you the front side of it. That's pretty ridiculous. I can't even get far back enough without breaking my neck to show you how big this thing is. It's trellised up four feet and it's a big giant mound and it butts up against my peppermint over there. And a tomato right next to it. There's a tomato. Oop. It's Rutgers. Nice uh, 
heirloom variety, I believe. Um, got a nice fruit on there. And the plant's getting right and mighty tall. Got a little gross fruit since we put some nutrients in it a few days ago. Got little cucumbers. I just took two of them off. I bet you can, there'll be another one in here that's big enough to take off. It's hard to keep up with them. Yeah, that one's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I'll leave it there until I'm ready to eat it. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I also put fennel. Fennel in my little vegetable wrap with garden herbs. Oh, yeah. And peppermint, of course. Peppermint goes in there. You got a lot of peppermint. Get, use up all this peppermint. Um, but I do want to point out one thing. I got corn growing here. Corn growing here. Corn growing on the side here that I planted all at the same time. I planted this guy. <laughs> and that corn plant. Oh, where did that fall? Let me go around. <clears throat> this corn is huge. I can't, I gotta show you, like, you gotta be able to see this perspective here. This is twice as tall as the table. Like corn should be, you know, if it's really fertile. There's other ones that are maybe competing or not getting as much nutrients at the end. But that guy is like killing it. Maybe it's a different variety. Could be. There are some different varieties. I take all that back. These may be... No, they're not. They're, they're just not thriving as well. But uh, that one is. And everything else is. And I got my vortex going here. Very cool. Keeping the water nice and mixed up. Like we like it. Aerated. Pulling water from one end to the other. Keep everything circulating. <clears throat> everything here is edible. Everything here is edible. It doesn't have to be cooked. It can be eaten right off the plant. As it should be. So that's that, and one final thing, I've just uh, completed this little project of transferring liquid fertilizer into these two and a half gallon jugs. And I got a really nice fertilizer out of it, so I don't know if you can't really see much from that, but it's nice and dark and brown and lots of humates and organics, but not as many organics as three or four days ago, and since the the uh, NutriCycler has been doing its thing here. Burning off carbon, turning it into uh, a less organic, organic liquid fertilizer. Come on, focus. Focus. So that's my NutriCycler. Um, I can explain more about that later. Also, you check out our website at bioponica.net and you can find out more about that. Um, yeah, just soaking that batch of nutrients that we used to make the first liquid fertilizer run in this 55 gallon drum. And I'm going to transfer that in here and do a little vortex action with the NutriCycler. So that's it. Here's my rainwater. It's about 175, 175 gallons. Oh wait, let's see. We're trapped. Where's my cord? Oh no, we're trapped. Oh, there we go. Yep, so fertilizer, organic liquid fertilizer, uh, made from biomass blends that we're doing. It's called Primordial Soup. And killing it with this plant growth. I mean, just killing it. And we're never discharging our water. Everything's organic. We're feeding fish. Fish go crazy over these nutrients. That's all we feed them. That's all we feed them. Look, that's where I poured them. That's where they're hanging out. And they're just swimming through them. Swimming through the nutrients, soaking them up. They were just nibbling on this bag. Because it's another bag of, of tea that I'm making just from fresh organics from our primordial soup, our mineral blend. They seem to be really thriving on it. But now that there's liquid nutrients in the water, they're just coaxing their way through, collecting it on their rakes of their gills, and then gulping it down. That's from organic liquid fertilizer that we're making to feed the fish. So we don't depend on fish, but we can have fish. We can have all the fish we want. 
because these nutrients are going to decompose into an inorganic plant ready fertilizer just as well as the urine will of these fish as it is excreted from their gills. Sorry it's not focusing. Maybe it isn't because there's cloudiness in the water. So I'm going to add a little more. And you can see it clouding up. And that's where they're going to be hanging out for the next little while. This is a, a batch taken from that same Nutricycler, but it was taken three or four days ago and it hadn't burned off so much carbon, so you see a lot of turbidity from that pour. But nonetheless, it's, I mean, it feeds our, feeds our, our biofilter um, microbes, it feeds our fish, and it feeds the, the, the uh, rhizobacteria that we like to colonize in these beds that are eating the organics. They all, everything eats organics. Rhizobacteria eat the organics from these plants. Uh, the roots as they form, as they excrete their carbohydrates. And they also thrive on organics in the soil as they do in the rocks here in our soilless hydroponic, soilless bioponic system, or aquaponic system, whatever you like to call it. But uh, we're doing it all organically. We're making our own biomass. We're not using any chemical fertilizers, no minerals added, none at all whatsoever, aside from what's derived from OMRI certifiable biomasses. Um, once they've been through the process of, of nutricycling or biofiltration, the way we do it at Bioponica. So we're taking biomass, dried blends that we mix from different varieties of biomatter and grinding them up and adding some microbes and turning it into a, uh, into a dry mix that can be shipped in 40 pound bags called primordial soup. Dry mix sort of starter for making organic liquid fertilizer. And we have the systems to make the fertilizer and the techniques and we can share all that with you if you want to check us out at bioponica.net and uh, catch up on, on uh, all the exciting things we're doing here at Bioponica. Anyway, thanks for watching.